Magnesium 3 and 8. 5 HTP. L theanine. Melatonin. Valerian. Ashwagandha. A lot of health influencers talk about supplements for sleep. However, when you actually look at the leading scientists and doctors on sleep, people like Matthew Walker, Michael Gradner, Michael Granister, and Michael Brias, they are actually pretty muted when it comes to supplements, which makes me a little bit suspicious. Are all these supplements what people make them out to be? Is there actually any evidence? So in this video, let's find out. We'll be covering magnesium, melatonin, valerian roots, ashwagandha, L-theanine, and hydrotroxytrypophan. If you want me to cover other supplements in future videos, mention in the comments. As sleep can be a bit boring at times, I was going to juggle some supplements to entertain you, but given I can't actually juggle, I'm gonna give you an interesting sleep fact or myth debunk between each section. Enjoy. Did you know falling asleep fast is generally considered a bad thing? If you consistently fall asleep in less than two to three minutes, you are likely not sleeping enough. Magnesium comes in 11 different forms, which is really confusing. They include ferronate, glycinate, citrate, and oxide, just to name a few. The main difference between these forms is their bioavailability and how they're absorbed by the body. So does it actually help sleep? Overall, there's been only five randomized control tests done on magnesium on humans, which isn't really many, especially when you hear about it so much, you think it's like this most established sleep product ever, and there's only five credible studies. One of the most cited studies is a high quality double blind randomized trial of 42 elderly patients with insomnia. The group that had magnesium showed statistically significant improvements in sleep and time to fall asleep. So looking good so far. If you look into examine.com, there are mentions of more studies, but as before, there's not many randomized controlled tests going on here. Many show a benefit of magnesium, which is great, but you need to be careful when judging on these results. There is one meta-analysis study I could find that did show that magnesium can improve subjective measurements of insomnia, especially in older adults. It showed overall as a 7.36 minute faster time to fall asleep and an improvement of total sleep by 16 minutes. This sounds amazing, falling asleep seven minutes quicker. However, keep in mind this is done on people with insomnia. These are people who might be spending one hour, two hours falling asleep. So seven minutes in that context isn't actually so impressive. Now, there was one bigger study I could find. It was done on over 5,000 people. And again, it showed improvements on sleep. However, it was not a randomized control study. So it's not necessarily the same quality of what you want to be making judgments on. Before I draw to conclusion, an interesting thing about magnesium is that it's assumed that at least 20 to 30% of the population are deficient in it. So even if the evidence on sleep isn't amazing, there's some good trials, but you'd expect a bit more. There's many other reasons to take it if you're deficient, and also it must be said that it can help in other health areas, not just sleep. So given it's fairly safe, and it's the third most used mineral in our body, it's probably not a bad idea to take. However, the odds of it curing your insomnia or your sleep issues are pretty slim. What type of magnesium to take for sleep? I hear this time and time again, and the two types of magnesium typically recommended by influencers is magnesium ferronate, so it's thought to cross the blood-brain barrier easier, and magnesium glycinate, which apparently has more calming effects on the body. However, I couldn't find a single study to back this up. The most cited study on magnesium in sleep, which I mentioned earlier, is actually using magnesium oxide, which people say is the worst type. There are some good theoretical reasons why ferronate or glycinate are better, but this isn't really backed up by any solid studies yet. Huberman receives quite a lot of criticism in the sleep world for things he's mentioned, and this is one of them. Honestly, I don't really care about his personal life, and I have to say, if it wasn't for his podcast on alcohol, I'm not sure I would have quit drinking when I did. But I do take an issue with him constantly promoting magnesium ferronate in the way that he does, given there's just so little evidence. In his defense, he's not the only person saying this, but if you're gonna promote a product, at least back it up with some randomized controlled trials. Otherwise, you really have to be honest with people and just say, in theory, it could help. That's all we actually know when it comes to magnesium ferronate. This is Matt from the future. I've added this clip for a specific reason that there is a study coming out in December this year on magnesium ferronate. Apparently it does show positive impacts of ferronate on sleep. 
However, there's a few things to keep in mind of this study. First of all, it was only done on Aura and on questionnaire data. So it's not done on via PSG, which is the gold standard. And also a lot of the things didn't change. REM sleep didn't change, overall sleep didn't change, sleep score didn't change, and sleep latency didn't change, which are kind of very key things you'll be looking for in improved sleep. So basically, even when this paper comes out, my opinion on Faraday ain't really changing. Sleep fact number two, time in bed is not the same as time asleep. Sadly, if you want to get eight hours of sleep, you need to spend more than eight hours in bed. The average person's sleep efficiency is 87.5%, which means if you want to get eight hours of sleep, that means nine hours, eight minutes in bed. I know it's not what we want to hear, but this is the actual truth. Melatonin. Melatonin is a super popular supplement. However, is it even a supplement? Technically, it's actually a hormone. Regardless of that, I am going to cover it. There are a number of studies that do show that melatonin can help with sleep disorders, particularly things like circadian rhythm issues, jet lag, shift work, and things like this. In this meta-analysis, it's found that melatonin can decrease time to fall asleep by seven minutes overall, and also increase sleep time by eight minutes. And in this meta-analysis that only covers randomized trials, we once again do see that melatonin does help to improve sleep, but not by anything crazy. I found lots of studies of melatonin. There's plenty of randomized trials on melatonin, so it's pretty conclusive that it will help improve sleep. Overall, it's considered safe, although there are a few question marks around its use still. Another thing to consider is looking at this study, it was shown that the amount of melatonin in pills you can buy can vary from minus 83% to plus 478%. Therefore, the melatonin you're buying may not actually be the dosage that you want it to be. It could be grossly over that. So I'd be super careful when buying melatonin. I'd really recommend you buy from manufacturers that have a GMP badge. Uh, therefore, they're basically making it under pharmaceutical conditions. Overall, melatonin works, but keep in mind that on average, it's gonna give you an extra maybe four to eight minutes of sleep, which is like gaining an extra one and a half, two percent 2% for most people. So it's not exactly gonna cure insomnia. However, it might help. Now, there are a few things to consider. First of all, it is a hormone, so I'd take extra care of dosages with it, with that in mind. Um, and probably its best use case in terms of what the science is saying and what is generally put out there by sleep experts is using it for jet lag, for adjusting sleep cycles, and using it for when you're older. If you're younger, in theory, the benefits won't be so strong. Another thing I would say about melatonin, other than the fact that the science is pretty legit on it, is the fact that it's also a very strong antioxidant. There are studies out there that show it can help with other conditions, and there's a lot more to be discovered here. So overall, melatonin kind of gets my thumbs up, to be honest. At least there's good evidence there, and it has a lot of potential in the future. Nonetheless, it could do with more studies around safety, about dosages, and it ain't gonna most likely cure your insomnia or sleep issues. So just be careful with that. Sleep fact number three, around 20% of the population has sleep apnea. Sleep apnea basically means that you're choking during the night, you're not getting air. And sadly, out of this 20% of people who have sleep apnea, only 20% of them are actually diagnosed, which means that one in five of you watching this right now has sleep apnea and a number of you don't even know you have it. So I really, really recommend if you snore in any way or form, if you're not waking up feeling great, you wake up in the middle of the night, get tested for sleep apnea. This video, watching this right now, may literally save your sleep in your life. Get it done. Valerian root is a herbal supplement that has been used for centuries to promote relaxation and sleep, but does it actually help sleep? This study done in India was a randomized trial of 80 people. It also used PSG for measuring sleep, which is basically as good as it gets when it comes to actual scientific based measurement of sleep. It did show significant improvement in terms of sleep time, sleep latency, aka how long it takes to fall asleep, and sleep efficiency. And in this meta-analysis, it shows out of 60 studies, 10 did show a positive result on sleep quality. Another study examined longer term effects in 121 people. After 28 days, the group receiving the valerian extract showed a decrease in insomnia symptoms. Despite all this, the main issue phase seems to be getting high quality valerian root and making it consistent across all studies is difficult. 
The evidence so far for Valerian root actually looks pretty promising. No major concerns, but how easy it is to get high quality Valerian root, we don't really know because uh, it's just not so well measured right now. In addition to this, it's not likely to solve your sleep issues. You may be seeing this reoccurring theme here, but none of these supplements seem to cure insomnia. It, just, it doesn't exist, but it might help. For certain when it comes to valerian root and probably everything else I mentioned, it needs more study. Next is L-theanine. So L-theanine is an amino acid found in tea leaves known for promoting relaxation without sedation. However, does it actually help sleep? There are some studies out there that show that L-theanine can improve sleep quality due to relaxation properties. It works synergetically with caffeine, which is why it's often found in many productivity drinks. However, this is what people say. When I actually look for these studies, there aren't many. Um, I did find this study that showed that L-theanine has potential to promote mental health, which can improve sleep, but this study was actually run by two researchers who worked at a sleep supplement company that made the product, so a little bit suspect. Now, I did find one meta-analysis study that did cover 11 different journals. Seven of these journals showed that there was an improvement in total sleeping time, and there's five that showed a quality in sleep. However, this is a somewhat not highly cited uh, meta-analysis, so I think you have to keep that in mind. Um, overall, not many studies on this. The ones that I did find often combine phenine with other products, so they're not very useful. So in conclusion, it seems safe. It's spoken about a lot. It seems to have promising evidence for calming people down, but very little when it comes to actual improving sleep. So I wouldn't rush into buying this one, but I would keep an eye out for other studies and try it if you like. But uh, be careful of what people say about this one. Sleep so fact number four. By focusing on something before sleep, you're more likely to dream about it. And the things that we dream about, we're more likely to find solutions to. They've done studies on students, and students who thought about their exams before sleep and had a good night's sleep actually had higher performance than those who didn't. Therefore, if you want a quick little performance tip, think of a problem before bed, go to bed, and you may have the answer in the morning. Let's talk about 5-HTP. 5-HTP is a precursor to serotonin, which can improve moods, and if I can improve moods, it potentially can improve sleep. In addition to that, there's the idea that increases in serotonin will also improve melatonin production. However, is this actually working in trials? So on this study of 12 people, it did show there's an improvement of REM sleep from 5 to 53% from placebo. It's very impressive, but keep in mind this is a super small study, so you can only look into this so far. In another study of over 20 adults, the results indicate an improvement of mood, quality of sleep, both verbal, visual, working memory, and a whole heap of benefits. However, in this study, they also gave the participants melatonin. So when people quote this study, just look at the finer details. You'll realize that it wasn't just 5-HTP. Therefore, given what we know about melatonin, I wouldn't trust this one so much. In this randomized controlled trial of over 30 people, it showed little to no benefit on sleep. Overall, I couldn't find any large-scale meta-analysis on 5-HTP. So if anyone finds one out there, let me know. But based on the few studies that are out there, it looks like to be safe. However, it can have some interactions with other medicines, and the evidence is somewhat mixed. One trial says nothing, another says some benefits. Overall, you can try it, but just wouldn't expect miracles. Sleep fact number five, the majority of sleep influencers, just health influencers overall, they don't really care about fixing your sleep or health issues. They just wanna sell you their supplements, their products. <sighs> I shouldn't have said that one, should I? But I don't really care. Let's move on. Let's talk about ashwagandha. Influencers and wellness advocates frequently comment about this one uh, for improving sleep quality, but does it actually work? This is a meta-analysis of five randomized controlled trials containing 400 participants. Ashwagandha extract exhibits a small but significant effect on overall sleep. In this 125 person randomized trial, this showed an improvement of memory, focus, psychological well-being, sleep quality, and reduced stress levels, and was also very well tolerated. Therefore, there is some indication that that knee certainly can improve sleep. In another randomized trial of 50 people, it improved sleep quality, mental clarity, and overall quality of life compared to the placebo control group. When looking at examine.com, there's an 80-person randomized control trial which showed 
similar positive results for ashwagandha. Overall, in terms of ashwagandha, I'm pretty impressed by the studies I've seen so far. This compared to the other supplements at least. Again, I don't think it's going to cure your insomnia, but at least there's some decent evidence that it can help and improve your sleep. In conclusion, magnesium, okay evidence, but not exactly overwhelming. Matt Walker himself said on the podcast he doesn't take it. So take that for what you will. Likely worth looking into if you don't think you can get it fully in your diet. Valerian root, if you can get it a very good quality, maybe not a bad one to try out, but again, not overwhelming by any means. L-theanine might improve your cognition, but I wouldn't expect a major improvement on sleep based on what's out there right now. 5-HTP, I see people on YouTube raving about this, but again, not great evidence to sleep. Now, a lack of evidence doesn't mean it doesn't work, but I think it's important we're honest with people when we're making assertions about supplements when there isn't really any good clinical trials, studies done on them. Ashwagandha, pretty decent studies, worth looking into, but I know it's expensive and again, can be issues with quality. Overall, if you're looking for a miracle cure to improve your sleep, supplements are unlikely to be your savior. If you're looking for like a small benefit, maybe an extra one or 2% extra sleep, then that seems achievable based on the evidence. Now, here's a non-scientific way to see it. Humans have been around for nearly 250,000 years. Sleep is integral for us to survive. Humans lived on every single part of the planet, long before planes and boats. Do you really think the secret to sleep lies in a supplement that isn't available in many locations and wasn't used for most of our history? It can't be. The real reason the supplement industry is five times bigger than the sleep industry is simple. We always want the easy way out. This has been me. I've tried all of these supplements a long time, hoping one of them would be working for me. The reality is we've got to take personal responsibility for our problems, and it's a really hard thing to accept. So if you're open-minded to that, I'd really recommend you look to other places for your sleep problems rather than supplements. If you like, you can check out my free sleep assessment. It's in the comments. It takes two minutes to complete, and it will give you a holistic overview of what the real causes are of your sleep issues. Do you agree or disagree with my overview? Let me know in the comments. And finally, this video took a lot of effort to make, a lot of time to research, so if you did enjoy it, I'd really appreciate the subscription. Take care.